Hi, I'm Ashton. I use he, they pronouns, and today I'm showing you my bookshelf. I'm wearing my hair a little bit differently than normal because I haven't cut my bangs in a while and I need to give myself a haircut, but I simply haven't yet. I also have like a wicked farmer's tan. Sorry. Um, I work at a barn. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mentioned in a video, I don't know, a while ago, that I was considering doing a little bookshelf tour and everyone in the comments was like, show us your bookshelf or perish. So that's what this video is. Full disclosure, I have watched only a very small handful of bookshelf tour videos because typically I see them and people have like walls full of bookshelves and they have like thousands of books and they haven't even read like 500 of them. And I'm like, I don't wanna watch that. I don't know, we're just in very different categories of like bookish people. So like my, I don't know, my ideal is to provide the bookshelf tour that I would want to see, um, which, you know, includes zines and decor and fun, fun stories about old gay book. I think the way I'm gonna do this is start by giving like a basic overview of how my bookshelf is organized. And then I'm going to go shelf by shelf and like book by book or section by section, I guess. I wish that these aren't all of the books I own. I do have a handful of other books at my parents' house. Um, but these are all the books that I like have personally with me here. But those are typically books like from my childhood or books that I'm not gonna reference or reread. Whereas these books are the books that like I personally own, will reference and will reread. I have always been a big bookshelf organization icon um, since my childhood. It's an autistic trait, I know, um, but I love to organize and reorganize my bookshelf. It brings me joy. So this is the way that I have it organized currently. Um, it's also the way that I've had it organized for the majority of my life is by general genre and then alphabetically by author last name. It'll make sense once I show you the organization system. So here's my organization system. The top shelf, these books, are all of my fiction books. None of the rest of this is fiction. But my, my second shelf down is all zines and then some like journaling things. And then this shelf is some of my like favorites slash TBR stuff organized by color. I don't have any other shelves organized by color. I've never really been an organized by color guy, but I thought it would be fun for this shelf because it is more of a mixture in genre than my other shelves. And also because they all just happen to have really fun colors and I thought they would be fun to organize um, color-wise. This shelf, the last shelf you can see, is my nonfiction shelf, um, my first nonfiction shelf organized alphabetically by author last name um, for the most part. I do need to reorganize my nonfiction shelves because under this shelf I have another nonfiction shelf that you can't see. Um, so that's the basic overview. I've got fiction zines, favorites, and then two big shelves of nonfiction. Um, this bookshelf is in fact two Ikea black bookshelves just stacked on top of each other. I would love to have real, like older bookshelves someday that are made of like real wood and not like Ikea particle board. Um, but you know, capitalism. Hi, it's Editing Ashton. It has been like a week and a half since I filmed this, maybe more, because that's how YouTube works. And I mentioned like my online store shop stock stuff a couple times in this video, but that's kind of outdated, so I wanted to give you a real live update. As of when this video goes up, I've now put up a digital option for both my Denny zine and my Love and Liberation zine, and I'm doing another run of pre-orders on my Denny zine. So for the next two weeks, you have two weeks to order a physical copy of the Denny zine and you have like infinite amount of time to order digital copies of either one. I also have about 70 buttons that I have photographed but I've not put up on the website yet. Those will be up soon. You can check my other social medias for updates on that. Also added shipping to the UK and Canada. If you live in places other than that and want me to try to figure out shipping for those areas, let me know. But those are the two like highest in demand. So those are the ones I wanted to do first. I also figured out how to do a version of sliding scale pricing. So if you want a digital copy of either of the zines, they start at a dollar and you can go up to ten dollars and if you can't afford that you can email me and have it for free digitally if you don't have money but want to read it i would rather you read it than like give me money that you can't give me you know cool bye thanks so my top shelf as i said is all fiction so this is the fiction section of this video i'm also not going to talk about every single book because some of them are just more interesting than others uh so my apologies <laughs> So here we have my top shelf. I guess we can start with my like trinkets. This is a tiny um, clear glass horse that I found at an estate sale. And then this is a tiny 
blue ceramic horse that I also found at an estate sale. Um, my struggle is that as an autistic person, if I find a, just a tiny little guy that reminds me of a special interest, I want him. And then these three books are all Archie comics. Um, I have a tradition, I guess, where every year in my stocking for Christmas, I get an Archie comic. I always have. At my parents' house, I have like 20 more of them. The first book alphabetically is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. I just love the way this book looks. The black on the pages is really delightful. After that, I have Kisses for Jet, which is also a comic. This one was sent to me by Nobrow. I have a couple other books that were also sent to me by Nobrow. And I'm gonna talk a bit more about this one in a video that I wanna make about queer comics. Um, Uncle Tom's Cabin, I have not read. I inherited this book from a transgender uncle of mine who died. Um, that's how inheriting things work, but this is an old edition of Uncle Tom's Cabin. I haven't read it, um, I will at some point, but I inherited it. I inherited a lot of books from him at the same time because, again, that's how inheriting works. This book I've recommended before, it's The Membranes, um, by Kitawe. I talked about it in a recent video, so I'm not gonna talk about it now. Um, these two are a series, Legendborn and Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. I went to a release event for Bloodmarked, which is the more recent book in the series. I've only read Legendborn, because here's my issue. I really wanna read Bloodmarked, but I read Legendborn when it came out, obviously, because I have the hardcover of it, and I wanna reread Legendborn before I reread Bloodmarked, but I haven't had the time, because it's thick, and it's fiction, and it's hard for me to read fiction sometimes. I also have a frog and toad parody book that my mom got me, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, which I got from the Freeman outside of a secondhand store. There's a rock on top of that one. I, again, have not read this one. I picked it up because I feel like, as a philosophy major, I should read it at some point. I also have Carmilla and 12 other classic tales of mystery by Sheridan Le Fanu. I've read this full thing, but I found this one at one of my local secondhand stores and I was like, oh my God, I'm getting it. Uh, the Welcome to Nightville book. I have not read this. This is my partner's. This is A Perfect Scar by Trevor Healy. Um, if you've read my Denny Pansy Division zine, which a handful of you have, probably you know what this is about. I've only read um, Winter Count in it, which is the story that deals with Denny, but I do want to read the rest of it. It is relatively high on my priority list because I did buy it, and I very rarely buy books these days. I also have 13 short horror stories by Jack London. Um, Jack London was one of my favorite authors growing up, so I have a lot of his books. Um, this is Skip by Molly Mendoza. This book is delightful. This is another fiction comic, um, that I want to talk about in my, in my queer comic video that I will make at some point. I also, of course, have Eva Vendetta. I've watched the V for Vendetta movie like five times at least, and I've read the book a couple times at least. And then I have a Toni Morrison book, Love, that I talked about in a recent video about leftist fiction. This is the only Toni Morrison I own. I got it for a dollar, even though it's a hardback at a local thrift store. And then we've got The Transition Baby, of course. I read this entire book out loud when it first came out to a friend, and then the same friend gifted me this book a while later because they found it at a queer people yard sale. Cemetery Boys, I have a hardcover of. I've read this book two or three times. Um, my partner got me this. Um, I also have Alice Walker's The Color Purple, which is another problematic book that I inherited from my uncle, um, and I have not read it. I will at some point. I know a lot of people really like it. I know a lot of people really dislike it. Finally, for my fiction shelf, I have the first Umbrella Academy suite. Yes, I read it because Gerard Way was involved. I found this one at a secondhand store. Um, and I picked it up because it was like 50 cents. This shelf is my zine shelf, and I really cannot show you every zine that I have. Also have like assorted rocks on top of a few empty journals. I also have this coffin case. I kind of collect these, not these specifically, but like coffin boxes in general. Um, it has HBO on the inside, so I would assume this is from some like murder mystery show or something. I truly have no idea. I found it at a thrift store. Um, I use it to store buttons that I don't have listed on my website yet. They probably still won't be listed when you see this because I still have to photograph them all and there's 60-ish. These are not ordered alphabetically, obviously. They're ordered by size because that made a lot more sense for zines, um, but these are two like reference books from Printed Matter that are art books and kind of catalog a lot of old queer zines. They're both absolutely beautiful. I'm so delighted that I have these. I wanted them for a really long time. I haven't read read these, but I have like used them as reference material, but I do want to read them cover to cover. I know that's not 
really standard for books like these, but I want to do it anyway. Um, I also have Black Blocks White Squares, which is not a zine, but is on this shelf anyway. Um, it's an anarchist-themed crossword book. Um, I also have the Encyclopedia of Doria. This is a book compilation of a bunch of zines that Cindy Crabb wrote and made. Um, I have a couple notes in here because I used this also for when I did queer zine research. This book was given to me by a friend of mine that works at a local bookstore. It came in for their used section and they sent me a picture and they were like, Ashton, I know the research you're doing right now. Do you want this? And I was like, oh my God, absolutely. Um, and I tore through this. I thought this was so much fun. Um, it does have some outdated language in it, but I really love zine compendiums in general. I would love to have more of them. I know Shotgun Seamstress came out with one as well that I would really love to have at some point. This is another similar one. This is actually my most recent book that I bought. I got it for a dollar at a thrift store. Um, I was looking for books to cut up for buttons and collages and such, but uh, instead I found this one, uh, The Flow Chronicles by Urban Hermit. I don't know much about this one, but I saw the cover and I saw that the back said queer theory on it and like the general vibes of the book are just very, very up my alley. Then I have a bunch of zines. Um, these are the two, I guess, bigger, right, one. This one is Be Gay Do Crime by the Marion Ardini Gang, and then this one is Stolen Stripey Revolution by Alex Reck, which I think every single zinester owns a copy of. Um, but maybe I should pull these out and just show you. Zine interlude, I'm sitting on the floor, I'm gonna show you some of my zines. I'm not gonna flip through any of them, however, I will try to link to as many of the zine creators as I can in the description because zines are not like books, they're a lot harder to search. And a lot of these I got through trades or got through just being handed a zine. Some of these are like really small press, like 10 of them exist, were made by friends. Um, and those ones I'm not gonna show just cause they like, they're not as public facing, but the ones that I know are from people who like sell zines and shit, um, or like put stuff online, they'll be linked. Um, these two are both trans zines from a local like house called Zine Bean Collective, um, and they do a bunch of zines and mutual aid type stuff. This one is a guide to starting hormones, and this one is about a transgender future. Um, and I got both of these in a bundle that was in support of a local free gender affirming clinic. This one is a local abolitionist history zine that I got from, I believe, a Food Not Bombs table at a local zine festival, but it's about a prison revolt at, at a women's prison in the 70s. Same with these two. I think these are from a crime think table at a local zine convention. Um, this one is like a smaller pamphlet about safe abortion. And then this one is Men Against Sexism. It's also a abolitionist history about a queer prison gang in the 70s. I believe this was distributed by some anarchists at a local zine festival, but it is by these folks on the back and I will link that down below. This one I believe I got from a friend in the local zine scene. I'm not gonna expand, but um, it is a crime think one. A lot of crime think zines are free to copy and distribute, um, as is the case with this one, but it's another abolitionist organizing strategy, like what will it take to stop the police from killing? This one is another favorite of mine, which is by Sari, who does hoax zine, and you've got a friend in Pennsylvania, if you're familiar with either of those. It is about the problems within the punk scene and the ways that we can fix them and how we can combat them. This is another one by Sari that I bought from them. I bought both of these while researching for my queer zine project. This is another queer abolitionist zine that I have. This one I've had for a long time and again, got for free from a friend that was tabling. It is by Indigenous Action Media. Again, they will be linked down below. I have two copies of this one, but it is Never Erased, which is a zine slash lyric book um, that I got with the Never Erased album from Say 10 Records. Yes, I got it because Dog Park Distance was on it, but I also really like a handful of the other bands on the record. I don't think they're selling this anymore, but I will link Say 10 anyway. Um, I know that they're working on a second edition of Never Erased. It's essentially just a comp album of queer underground alt punk artists. I also have a copy of Yes, I'm Flagging by Archibald Giovanni. I don't know if this is a zine or a book because it has an ISBN and it was like, I believe professionally, um, published, but it's it's zine size, it's very small, and definitely has the vibes of a zine because it is about queer gay sex. I have a copy of one of my own zines. This one is by Eternia Press. It's It delights me. I got it in the mountains. This is an anthology of a zine series about growing up goth in the 80s, um, and it delights me for obvious reasons. Um, more personal zines, another one of my zines. I have a handful of more mini zines from the Zine Bean Collective. I also have another 
tiny abortion zine. I don't know who made this one. Um, they didn't put their name on it, but I got it at a local zine festival. These two are from the same folks and I will link them down below as well. They're based in Virginia, but I met them at a zine festival. This is the second edition of a little gender zine that I got from Merck. Um, they don't go by this name anymore, that's why I'm covering it, but I will link their work down below. Although if you're into zines, you probably follow Merck already. These ones, uh, delight me. They are zines printed on receipt paper from D.A. Levy's work, who was a anarchist poet. Um, don't know a lot about him. I got these ones, I traded for them at, in, like, academic thing with the only other person there who was doing zine-related work. It was very cool that we found each other. Um, I'm not gonna show you the full thing, but, like, you know, it's on, it's on receipt paper, but it's a very cool way of doing a zine. And then this one I got from the Lynchburg, Virginia Food Not Bombs group. It's just a little like resource guide on why there shouldn't be cops at Pride. Again, that's not all of them. I do have a handful more that I won't be showing you, but that is, uh, at least all of the like zines that I will publicly share. <laughs> that was a fun section. Oh, I dropped them all again. And that's my zine shelf. This is my next shelf. This is my favorite shelf, probably, just because I think it's really cute. Um, but I'll show you the sides first. I have this little ceramic bowl that I made. Um, well, I painted it. My partner pottered, potteried it. Um, but it says a better future is possible, and it has, like, barbed wire on the top because I painted it, and I think it's cute, and it's just full of rocks. This is a candle holder with bats on it that is full of push pins, And then I have my mug full of uh, bookmarks and gay pride flags. And then this is my Shakespeare collection, and then these two books are books I'm borrowing. On this shelf, I have my Tamagotchi that I've had since I was a child that doesn't work anymore, as well as um, another piece of pottery that I painted. It says, Gender Revolution is Upon Us, um, which is a quote from a zine, and it has some flowers on the bottom. And a gargoyle. Um, I inherited this gargoyle from the same uncle that died that uh, I inherited all of the books from. And then I just have a, a vase full of rocks. Um, these are both books that I repurposed into being like little boxes. So they have a hole cut out in the center that have a bunch of little notes and love letters in them. <laughs> so this shelf is mostly nonfiction. My favorite books or books that are like high up on my TBR. So we have Trapdoor, which is a collection of essays about trans media and politics and representation. It's a pretty hefty trans studies book. I bought it for my zine research and I read it cover to cover, which is not typically what people do with anthologies, but I really, really like this one. And if you're interested in the politics of trans media, it's definitely a very good read. Um, although you might want to find it at a library because it is a thick and expensive book. Next is Belly of the Beast by Deshaun L. Harrison. Uh, this is an incredible, incredible book. You can tell by all of my little notes that are in it. It's about the politics of anti-fatness and anti-blackness, and it is very, very good and very, very important. And I would highly recommend this one. I've talked about it before on the internet, I know, but still, I would highly recommend it. We've got Audre Lorde's Sami, which again, I would highly recommend. I also have Kelly Hayes and Mariami Kaba's Let This Radicalize You, which I got when it first came out because my boss gave me a gift card to a local bookstore. Um, I have not read it yet, but that is why it is on the shelf, it's because it's high up on my reading list. I also have Revolting Prostitutes by Molly Smith and Juno Mack, and this book is what has shaped a lot of the way that I view sex work and decriminalization, and I would highly recommend it. I believe I got this one secondhand. Um, I also got this one secondhand. It is a copy of Leslie Feinberg's Trans Liberation, which I think is kind of essential reading for transgender folks. I love this one. I also have Do This We Do This Till We Free Us by Mariana Kaba. I have read this one. I know I got this one secondhand. It's Alison Bechtel's Fun Home. If you haven't read Fun Home, uh, you should but it's probably available at a library near you. I also have this older edition of the Disability Studies Reader, um, edited by Leonard Davis. I haven't read this one cover to cover, um, again, but I've read some of the essays in it and I've referenced it for videos and for school. Same with this one, which is Trans Studies Reader Remake. Um, this book I found secondhand when I was writing Love and Liberation, which is a zine that I still have some copies of if anyone's interested, um, but it's a secondhand copy of Bell Hooks's All About Love. Obviously, uh, people have complaints and critiques of bell hooks. We all do. Everyone has critiques of everything and that's fine, but All About Love is an interesting one for sure. 
And I have this anthology edited by Christopher Soto that is all by queer poets of color. I don't read a lot of poetry, but the poetry I do read is always by queer people. Um, but this is on my favorite shelf for a reason. I really like all the poetry in this book. I've talked about it before online. This is one of my absolute favorites. I first read this through my university's library system and then I bought it because I wanted to reread it and I'm on my third reread right now. I'm rereading it because I want to make a zine regarding Lou Sullivan and this book. I love this book. I treasure this book. Um, if you've not read We Both Laughed in Pleasure, I would highly recommend it. This is another book that I read at a library and then I bought it because I loved it so much and I've reread it since. Um, but it is an oral history of queer core edited by Warfield and Crasshole and Yoni Lester. This is a great resource on queer core if you ever want to learn more about it. I also have Decolonizing Transgender 101. I have not read this one, but it is high up on my list. And then this one is an anthology of poetry. Again, I've read some of it, but not all of it. Um, but there's so much poetry in here. Anyway, it's called We Want It All, an anthology of radical trans poetics. And from what I've read, that is a very accurate title. And then at the end of my shelf, I have my lava lamp that I've had for like uh, 20 years and a little skull with a handmade masquerade mask on it. The lighting isn't the best down here because I'm not a YouTuber. I don't have a lighting setup. Um, but I'm just gonna sit on the floor for the rest of these. These are my bottom two shelves. These are all nonfiction. Again, some of it's more interesting than others. Um, most of these I've read and most of them were either bought secondhand or gifted to me. And a lot of them I've talked about online before. Um, I've got Queer City by Peter Ackrod, which I have read twice. Um, I really love gay niche history books. I talk about them all the time on the internet, um, but this is one of those. Then I've got Gay Berlin, um, which you can tell I like because of the tabs. This one I got for 50 cents at the library book sale. Communist Manifesto and other revolutionary writings. Not all of them are as revolutionary as others, like Thomas Paine is in here. Um, I got it mostly because of the Communist Manifesto, but also it has a little bit of Proudhon in there, um, as well as an Emma Goldman piece, as well as a Kropotkin piece. So I wanted to read those. I haven't read it yet, but my copy of the Communist Manifesto, which I will show you later, is in French um, because I traded copies with a friend of mine. Um, this one, can you see it? You can kind of see it. It's an illustrated history of ghosts. So it is a nonfiction comic. It was also sent to me by No Brow. I thought it was mid-tier, like three and a half stars maybe, um, but I'm not taking that one out because it's slightly too tall for my bookshelf, so it's really hard to get back in. Um, I have She's Not There. I haven't read it. It's another one that I inherited. Um, I have Antifa, the Anti-Fascist Handbook by Mark Bray. This is one of the first um, leftist books that I read. I would recommend it, but I haven't read it since 2018 or 2019, so take that recommendation with a grain of salt, but I do own it. Um, this is a Stonewall History from 2004. I think this is a first press of it. It has the photos in the middle. Um, interesting. Personally, I think the Martin Duberman one is better, even though it's older, and I have that one also, but um, this is a Stonewall history book. Um, this is The Deviant's War, The Homosexual versus The United States of America. Haven't read this yet. Definitely want to. I was considering putting it up on my uh, immediate TBR shelf, but uh, I don't have room. So <laughs> this is another one that I haven't read and got secondhand. Again, I want to read it. I believe it is a critique of gay rights going like capitalist mainstream. It's from 2000, so definitely their critiques could be still applicable, but some of them might be like not as useful. So we'll see. I don't know. I'll read it at some point. I have Marriage a History by Stephanie Kuntz, which is a history of marriage. I, it's fine. It's a book. I read it for a class. Um, my other Stonewall book, my Martin Duberman one, it's right here. This is one of the first histories that was written on Stonewall, and I personally think it's one of the better ones. Um, some of the language is outdated, yes, but they use a lot of the language that the people that were there used for themselves, which is a, a lot of the times the best way to do history. Um, this is the New Bottoming book. It's a BDSM nonfiction about consent and negotiation and stuff. It's interesting. Not what my channel's about, but I do have this book. Take from that what you will. I have a heartbreaking work of staggering genius. I have no idea what this book's about. I inherited it. Maybe I'll read it someday. I have The Social Writings of Jack London. I think I've read a couple chapters of it, but this is an old copy that I got from the library because nobody is reading The Social Writings of Jack London, but I want to. Um, I have Black Skin, White Masks by Franz Fanon. I really need to read this one. 
Um, it is high up on my list, but not on that shelf because I don't have room for it. Um, this is an older book in like black sociology, psychology, um, but it's still considered really, really important and influential. If you aren't aware, it's about what being black in a white supremacist world like does to a person, um, which obviously what that does to a person is harrowing. Um, but I've heard really good things about this and it's definitely up on my up on my list. I of course have Lord Jane Grace's memoir. It's also too tall for me to effectively get out of my bookcase. Um, I have Melissa Gira Grant's Playing the Whore, another really, really great book on the politics of sex work decriminalization. Um, it's a great read along with Revolting Prostitutes, which I recommended earlier. I also bought this one secondhand when I was writing my essay about sex work. Um, I have a copy of The Ethical Slut that I got secondhand. This is, if you're not familiar, a like, polyamory 101 beginner's guide. I didn't get a lot from it um, because a lot of it is just like your classic consent and boundary stuff, but it's definitely good for beginners if you know like zero stuff. And honestly, I think a lot of monogamous people would get more out of reading this than polyamorous people do. There's definitely critiques of this book to be had, and I think a lot of them are very valuable. I have a copy of X Marks a Spot, which a mutual of mine put together. It's in anthology, but it's got a lot of work in it, all by non-binary people. And I believe I have a full video about this, or I've at least talked about it before. So I also have a copy of Chomsky and Herman's Manufacturing Consent. Haven't read this. I got it at a library book sale. Um, I will read it at some point. I know it's like important in a lot of leftist literature, but um, I've also definitely heard some critiques of it, and especially since it's not the most recent book. I don't know how much I would learn from it. I don't know, Chomsky's not my favorite guy for a lot of reasons. This is a memoir that I got as a gift when I graduated um, from like the Women's and Gender Studies Department. They got us all books. Um, a Cup of Water on My Bed. Haven't read it. I'm sure it's good. I'll probably read it at some point. Next is a French gender studies book called Sex et Genre, um, Sex and Gender in English. I'll probably try to read it at some point. I'm not fluent in French, but I know enough French that I feel like I could probably read it okay. I also have a copy of Instance in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. Um, this is a memoir collection of journal entries and related documents um, that relate to the life of an enslaved woman in North Carolina near where I live. And I talked about this book in a handful of history classes that I took in college and I found a copy at a secondhand store and I've only read half or so of like ex excerpts from this book, but I do want to read the full book, which is why I got a copy of it. Again, this book is too tall to effectively take out of my bookshelf, but um, Naomi Klein's Shock Doctrine I own a copy of. I've read a couple of her books and I think they are very effective and have a lot of information in them, um, but they are kind of hard to read for anyone who doesn't like to be depressed by the current state of things. I also have this old Lenin Imperialism book um, that discusses imperialism as an aspect of capitalism. I'm not a Leninist, you all know this about me, but I read a lot of people that I don't agree with in every aspect. Um, I have A Night at Sweet Gum Head, which is a history, gay history of Atlanta. I have not read this yet, but I dearly want to. Um, again, I love a little gay history book. This is a book about the history of women and horses. Um, definitely a change from what I normally read. I haven't read it yet. I want to give it to my boss. I work with horses, if you weren't aware. I found it at a secondhand shop and I was like, I feel like this will be interesting. And my boss also really likes to read, so. Um, I have How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. I've read this twice, I think. I know, I agree that it's kind of fucked up that I have books that I've read twice when I haven't read every single book, but listen, what happens, happens. This is a great book for anyone who does not understand how the history of racism and slavery have directly impacted the systems that we live under today. Hard to read because of how fucked up history is, but like truly and genuinely important. I wish that in like high school, this is the shit we read instead of the Declaration of Independence, you know? I read the Declaration of Independence like every year in high school. I didn't need that. Nobody needs to read the Declaration of Independence every year. This is the shit we need to understand. <laughs> um, this book I have not read. I again found it secondhand at a library book sale. Um, it's called Subversives, the FBI's War on Student Radicals and Reagan's Rise to Power. I thought it would be interesting. It sounded interesting. I feel like this book is going to be less radical than I desire it to be, but 
that is how books go frequently for me. <laughs> Next, I of course have Transgender History by Susan Stryker. Um, I got this secondhand. You can tell because I don't write in books, but I put tabs in them. I got it for my trans studies class, but I did read the full thing. And then I have a little booklet by Thoreau. Um, I have my critiques of Thoreau. We all should. Man was a liar. But I inherited this one, and I'm a philosophy student, so of course I kept it. I haven't read it yet, though. And then at the very end of this shelf, I have um, another coffin container. And then under that, I have a bunch of patches. And then I have my... Uh, French Communist Manifesto. I have Marx's Wage, Labor, and Capital, Value, Price, and Profit, which I have read, but not read the physical book of, just like read a PDF of it. Um, and then I have all three volumes of Das Kapital. I've only read the first one, but I wanted to reread the first one before reading the second and third ones, um, but then I got stuck in the middle of the first one, so. All right, on to my bottom shelf. Um, first is Aristotle's Ny Nicomachean Ethics. Can you, did I say I was a philosophy student? <laughs> then we've got Joel Bacan's The Corporation. Um, this one my dad gave to me from his bookshelf. Uh, I think it's older and I have not read it, but it does have a Noam Chomsky blurb on the back. I have Alex Burry's Transmission. I have a full video about this. I do want to reread some of the older, not older, but like 2015 era trans memoirs that I have, um, but I don't, like them enough to want to reread them, especially when I have so many other books that I want to read for the first time, you know? I have an old copy of Silent Spring that I inherited. I know Silent Spring is not like the most accurate anymore. It's definitely a product of its time, but it's an important product of its time and I haven't read it, but I do want to. I'm a little bit worried about reading this just because of how old it is, um, cause it definitely seems a little fragile. Um, this I got at a secondhand store. It is The Horseman's Bible. It's an old, old horse nonfiction book. Um, I've read some of it. I've referenced it before, which is like kind of funny. I don't know. Um, I have a bunch of social work books that I inherited from my dead uncle. Um, I'm not going to show you all of those just because they're not that interesting. Sorry. I have more philosophy. I have Hobbes, Leviathan, and Epictetus's The Handbook. I've read both of these, but like, I don't know, it's philosophy. I'm not gonna bore you with it. Um, I have a book of stuff by Young. I haven't read this. I inherited this one. More philosophy, Kant's grounding for the metaphysics of morals. This is a hospital, psychology hospital memoir that I inherited and have not read. I'll read it at some point. Girl Interrupted, if you're familiar. I have more philosophy books, The Structure of Scientific Revolution and The Basic Writings of Existentialism. Another philosophy book, Mill's Utilitarianism. Janet Mock's Redefining Realness. I read this for trans studies. I think it's fine. More philosophy, Iris Murdoch's The Sovereignty of Good. These two, Albert J. Knox's Memoirs of a Superfluous Man and George Orwell's The Road to Wigan Pier. Haven't read either of these, inherited both of them. Will maybe read them someday. This book that my brother gave me, maybe I'll read it. I don't know. Any of you read this? Is it good? <laughs> More social work books that are simply not interesting enough to show you. And then this one? Descartes' Bones? <laughs> I really like uh, nonfiction about death. It's one of my like little areas that is so specific that I've read a lot of books about. This was in the like free books box that sometimes are outside secondhand shops. I think it's like literally actually about Descartes' Bones because he got exhumed. Um, and I just think the history of like dead bodies is so interesting. <laughs> Finally, I have this stack to show you. Um, these were scattered throughout that shelf, so I took them out as I went. But these five books I got from a estate sale that, by looking at the pictures of the estate sale, I saw the books and I was like... Um, because it was obviously a gay couple that had passed or moved to a retirement home or was selling all their stuff for whatever reason or another. Um, it was a delightful estate sale. They had a lot of art. They were clearly like a very well-off gay couple, um, which I could not relate to, but... They had a lot of books that I wanted. So here are the books that I snagged from them. These were $2 each. So I have a hardcover copy of Dirty Pictures, which is a history of Tom of Finland's work. Um, this is Pages Passed from Hand to Hand, uh, which is an anthology of the hidden tradition of homosexual literature in English from 1748 to 1914. Uh, 
I'm very excited to read this one because it's like a niche little gay history topic that seems right up my alley. Um, I have Lipstick Traces, A Secret History of the 20th Century. It's like a counterculture, underground culture history um, from 1990, and I am excited to dig my claws into it once I get a chance to. They also had a copy of Gay New York, which I had been looking to get my hands on for a while. I read excerpts from this. Like, it, it's one of the like pinnacle academic gay history texts that a lot of people use in like gay history classes. So obviously there are critiques of it. I have my own critiques of it, but I was excited to find a copy. And finally from them, I have an old copy of Judith Butler's Gender Trouble, which I was so excited to get my hands on because this is such a cute, cover like it's so cute and it had this paper inside of it that is so funny to me it seems like very freudian like attachment theory but um i just thought it was funny i just think it's a funny piece of paper that's like gay history i don't know and that is it that is all of the books in my house mostly i hope this video ended up okay. Um, it sure has taken longer than I thought it was going to. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of my zines and all of my little niche gay history books and hanging out with me on the floor while I talk about my books. Goodbye, comrades. I hope you have read something really interesting lately, and I will talk to you later, maybe.